Let us read the prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious and almighty God, we gather today with hearts open and spirits willing to serve. On this day of consecration, we come to dedicate ourselves and the gifts you have blessed us with. Lord, we acknowledge that everything we have is yours and we offer it back to you with gratitude. We invite your presence to fill this space, guiding our hearts and minds toward your will. Consecrate us anew, Lord, and may our time of worship, our prayers, our songs, and our lives be a reflection of our devotion to you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Remember him, and he has been here many times. So welcome, and thank you for being here today. So turn to each other and share the peace and grace of Christ as we welcome one another to the house of the Lord. Um, 
Uh, this is one of the videos that we'll be sharing at our charge conference. This is all the ministries that are happening in 2024. Um, and many of you get to see your beautiful smiling on the screen. Um, and we will be sharing this video with uh, our district superintendent when we come for our charge conference. But uh, children, it's very important that you are part of the church. Yeah. And um, we notice that we have a lot of uh, pictures of what's happening throughout 2024. And we're so grateful for each and every one of you. Of what you have done every Sunday, uh, this children has been committed to come to church every Sunday. So um, we may not be able to give money for the budget of the church, but your presence, your being here, come early for Sunday school, and all the things that you have done, we're so grateful for that. And um, we are, we're hope that you continue to share your gift with the church. And I know that Christmas is coming up. We're gonna do a lot of uh, Christmas cards and Christmas gifts to give to our sisters and brothers in Hope Gardens and No Family Caring Services. Amen? So, uh, by looking at all that, and this is what you guys did last year, uh, making Christmas gift, and we're gonna do the same thing again this year. Uh, so, uh, those are the things that, uh, all these kids have been part of our ministry, and we're so grateful for our children, so uh, that's part of our consecration Sunday to give thanks to God for the gift of the church, especially our young children. Amen? Amen. Okay, so let's stand and pray. Praise the loving God. We're so grateful for these children who are here this morning to allow them to be part of this body of Christ using their gift, their talent, their presence. They give us uh, hope for the future of our church. Bless each and every one of them. And those who are not with us today, oh Lord, we lift them up to you for your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you. And now let us uh, share our joy and also lift up any of our prayer concerns that we may have today. Let's start with the birthday uh, celebration. Who's celebrating their birthday this month, this week? Um, Mele? Today, uh, Gilbert is 99 years old. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Happy birthday to Gilbert. Melon is caring for an elder man who is 99. His name is Gilbert. He was able to come uh, sometimes to worship with us, but sending our love and happy birthday. Thank you. My um, love, Gilbert. Any other blessing? Joe. Uh, I know we had his birthday this month too. We said happy birthday last Sunday. Malone, after that. Okay, Chris. Uh, although I forgot to send the letter out, today is the day I take orders for script. Please see me after church. Thank you, Chris. Sonia, and then Joyce. So Rita, my sister, is, uh, was discharged from hospital yesterday. She's a little better than when she went in, but she's still going to need prayers and be able to eat and sustain herself. And Wayne's procedure went fine. Thank you for your prayers. Lord, in your love and mercy, hear yeah. our prayers for Rita and Wayne. Joyce? Yes, prayers for that we have a colleague at work who lost his hands in the fire. Pain Metro, so also prayers for all the other homes. I believe there's like 150 of them. Yeah, yeah, all he had, he came in on Friday and all he's got is what he's done. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, and I think Ralph has a lot of information on um, the fire because he has been in touch with the community. But Lord, in your love and mercy, be our prayers. prayers. Um, for our Conspiration uh, Sunday today, as you have received the card in the mail, and if you don't have, a choice has some extra cards to give to you. So during offering, uh, the plates will be passing. You may put your card, your pledge commitment card in it with your offering today at the same time before we have um, the DS bless our gift and our pledge for next year. Thank you. Uh, it is truly a joy to have, once again, our district superintendent. He's coming here today as a DS. Prior to that, he always come as our uh, the pastor of Sherman Oaks. So thank you for being here. We truly bless of your presence and come to share the word of God. Thanks be to God. Um, um, any other announcements that anybody has that I may not remember? Uh, please stay after for potluck and uh, join a more fellowship as we join together. So now I would like to invite the DS to come and pray for us, for our pastor prayer. Also pray for Ladu. Uh, she went through her chemotherapy and I think she's doing good but uh, needed your prayer. Also pray for Malaya that she is in the hospital. I was told uh, this morning uh, and for those who are not able to be with us, may God's mercy and love be with them. So let us pray. So as we pray this morning, I would uh, ask you to remember, as someone that has already shared, there's been a pretty horrendous fire, mountain fire, that has uh, actually impacted several of our churches in the communities of uh, Moore Park, Santa Paula, and Camarillo. Uh, we have churches in all those areas, so uh, Moore Park UMC, uh, they have uh, families in that church that have their homes threatened. Elboy Pastor, uh, that's Pastor Rui Mizuki, Moore Park is Reverend Christy Smith. Bardsdale, uh, United Methodist Church is uh, Pastor Jaime Torres. Their house was burned in uh, Santa Paula area. Camarillo Korean and Camarillo UMC, Reverend Dr. Say Young Lee and Camarillo. Yeah, the English Ministries, Reverend Dr. Elbert Kim. And he told me that they had a family that lost their house and several were damaged by the fires. So yeah, yeah, last I heard it was hundred at least 150 homes were destroyed. So so I like to include these churches, these communities, and these pastors in our prayers as we pray this morning. Amen. Amen. So good to be with you all today. And I'm elated and appreciate the invitation from my good friend. Pastor, Reverend Dr. Calacita. And so, um, let's be in an attitude of prayer this morning. Loving, gracious God, uh, this is the day you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this day of consecration. We thank you, 
Lord, for being uh, able to come into the house of the Lord to worship our great and awesome and mighty God. And we thank you, Lord, for uh, this day to, um, to come before you, Lord God, with our prayer. You said, come to the throne of grace in time of need, and we would find help. And so, God, we come to the throne this morning, and we come to bring you those who have been acknowledged that, have, that are um, rehabbing from surgery and, and other ailments and sicknesses. God, we pray for uh, the medical teams that are providing health care and, and, and their expertise and science to these folks. Lord, we pray for wisdom for them, for guidance, for direction, Lord. We pray that all that man can do, God, would be availed to these folks. But God, we pray that even greater, that, uh, that above the natural, supernatural grace and healing would be extended unto them, oh God, and that, that health and healing will, res will return to them. And Lord, we pray for each and every one who's been hurt. God, we pray uh, for uh, this powerful church, wonderful church that's been so faithful in this community of Norwood, Lord God. We just pray for the continued light of uh, the gospel to continue to shine forth in this community, Lord God. And I thank you for the faithfulness of these uh, givers, Lord God, and those who are consecrating their offering unto you, Lord. We know that all things come of you, and we're just returning a small portion, Lord God, of that which you have given to us. And so, God, we thank you for the faithfulness and those who um, know that um, God loves a cheerful giver. And so, God, we thank you today. Lord, we pray for these churches, Lord, the churches of Moore Park, Elroy, Pastor, Bardsdale, Camarillo, Korea, and Camarillo, you know, seeing these pastors represented here, Lord God, those who've suffered loss, those who've lost homes in these communities, those who've uh, had um, really horrendous setbacks and, and devastation. And so, God, we pray that uh, strength and courage would be given unto them, Lord God, and that they would have the fortitude to rebuild and restore their lives, and God, that you would be with them in a very powerful and real way, Lord God, they would sense your grace even in this uh, setback of life, Lord God, but uh, God, we pray that they would be a resilient people and, uh, and have grit and be able to return, um, Lord, to uh, their former state, and God, we just pray your grace on them even now. And so, God, we thank you for our service today, Lord God. We ask you to enter in, Lord, by your spirit and be upon us, Lord God, and bring revelation, bring insight, bring, bring your truth that only you can bring to us today, Lord God. We pray, Lord, for a new enlightenment, a new vision, a new dream, Lord God, to be your people in this time, this place, and, and, and Lord, that we walk in your purposes uh, as we build your kingdom. Lord God, and advance the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, we thank you, and we praise you for all these many blessings, and we ask it in the wonderful and matchless name of Christ our Savior. And with that, that all God's people say, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Thank you. Today we have um, four short uh, scripture readings. Uh, please stand if you are able. The first comes from Psalms, Psalm 103, verse 13. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Our next reading comes from Psalms 100, verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Colossians 1, verse 16. For everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, everything God started in him and finds its pur purpose in him. And our last verse comes from 2 Corinthians 9, 7b, 11a. For God loves a cheerful giver. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Good morning, Nola. So good to be with you this morning. And um, my great and wonderful friend, as I said earlier, uh, Pastor Calacita. She's someone very special uh, to me. And um, um, just before I start uh, sharing the word for today, I want to just tell you a little bit about myself. Those of you may not know me, I'm a new DS. And um, uh, I was born and raised in the United Methodist Church. In fact, not far from here. In fact, it's the church you know, Bacoyme United Methodist Church. That's where I was born, baptized there as an infant, grew up in a wonderful church, uh, uh, had great youth workers, great uh, youth leaders, uh, wonderful pastors. That church is a little small church, but it's a special church. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but almost, uh, I've counted, I think I've encountered one of like 12 pastors came out of a coin of United Methodist Church, isn't that something? <laughs> and um, so it's just a special little place and it's still near and dear to my heart. Um, as Pastor Adrian Garcia now pastors uh, there. Um, but um, so I grew up there then went off to college and and uh, I got, I was an aerospace engineer for about 10 years. I was a work for Hughes Aircraft Company and uh, in Canoga Park Missile Systems Group. They worked at Rockwell on the space station at Rocketdyne for uh, a number of years. When I heard the call, or really finally answered the call, <laughs> and so I went into uh, the ministry. And, um, and then I uh, started, was part of a, a ministry we call Shalom Zone. I don't know if you guys remember, we had Shalom Zones in the Methodist Church right after the LA riots because uh, um, there was just a, such a need in the inner cities and urban areas, and so they started the Shalom Zone. So I started as a Christian community developer. Uh, back at my home church, Bequirman, was where our project was, and um, just really enjoyed that ministry work with at risk youth. And, and working to empower people financially and uh, entrepreneurially in other kinds of ways. And then um, I was called to work on the conference. So I worked on the conference for uh, eight years as youth and adult camping ministry service. Youth are very dear to my heart. I always love to see young people. I love the pictures. I love that you guys have youth here. And um, I'm always excited and, 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 and I'm always encouraging churches to reach out to young families, young people, youth, because uh, that's, that's the missing and needed demographic in our churches. So I would encourage us to do that. So um, I spent eight years there. Then I went to Santa Clarita as associate pastor um, and my first pastorate. And I really enjoyed that time there. Then I went to Sherman Oaks at the church in there for almost uh, 18 years till the bishop got a hold of me and, <laughs> and twisted my arm. So I'm very happy there and love the pastor in Sherman Oaks. But she says she thinks it's time for something new and that I should take this up. So I did. So uh, I'm a new DS. Y'all be nice to me, okay? And when I get to your charge conference, <laughs> treat me nice because I'm still learning. <laughs> I learned a lot. But anyway, it's good to be with you today. I'm married. I have three children. I have two girls and a boy. So I was in college, and I have um, actually three grandchildren. And uh, I know what you're saying. You said, "No, Pastor, you're too young to have three grandchildren." Is that what you're saying? No, no. <laughs> I don't actually do <laughs> three grandchildren. And I always joke. I said, if I knew how great it was to have grandchildren, I would have had them first. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much my story. My wife would have loved to have been here, but. She um, committed to going to see a friend of ours who's a certified lay servant speaker, um, and, and she committed a couple of months or two ago, and so she went to hear her friend, our friend, speak. But I'm glad she did because, um, as you know, your pastor is very, um, uh, very involved in lay servant ministries, and I promote that everywhere I go. And she's just done a wonderful job, especially among our Pacific Islander community, uh, growing that ministry, and it's such a wonderful ministry. And I encourage everyone to try and uh, be a part of that. So, that's just a little bit about me, just to give you a little background so you know who I am, where I come from. <laughs> Excuse me. 
So I gave you a little handout because this is what I used to do in my church. I always gave a little message note, so you have a little hand down your hand. Just a little outline to follow along. If you want to scribble something down, or I might ask some questions that you might want to respond to in uh, during this message uh, today. So, um, um, I've been recently, friends, uh, speaking about resilience and grit. Resilience and grit, because uh, I think that is a needed topic in society that we live in today. That we need more resilience, we need more grit. And, and the, really the message today borrows from that theme because the things we're going to talk about today are also key factors to resilience and grit. But I want to see these ideas uh, in a new light and that God wants his people, I believe, to enjoy life, to have a good life. I think God actually wants us to have a good life. You know, Jesus said that, I, that he came that we might have life and have it with abundance. All right? Y'all familiar with that text in John 10, 10? Um, another verse says, says that he might have life that is real life. And I think that's what we should be looking for, life that is real life. And that's what I'm after. And I believe the Lord would have his people to experience real life, good life, fulfilled life, a joy-filled life, a meaningful life. So that brings me back to the original thought, a resilient life, a greedy life is a good life. Because when life knocks us down, just like these folks experienced this fire just recently, and, and I'm sure all of us have had has life ever knocked you down? Anybody? Am I the only one that had life knock me down one or two times <laughs> before? Um, um, the Bible says that when we get knocked down or when we experience trouble, and, 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 and we all experience trouble in life. You know, I tell the young people, if you haven't experienced any trouble in life, just keep on living because you will experience some trouble in life. And um, But we have the reassuring words from the word of God that says that not only is God with us, but we shall get up again, even after we've been knocked down in life. So, friends, I, I think that um, we live in an extraordinary time. Uh, and it's kind of a materialistic and consumerist kind of society we live in now. We're most in this culture of just you know, acquisitions, and we always want more, we want bigger, we want, uh, and, and, that, and it's a myth that uh, self-worth is found in material wealth, and the happiness is found in possessing things, you know, and so, I love this quote from Dave Rev, he said, we buy things we don't need with money we don't even have, to impress people we don't even know. <laughs> and I, I think that's true sometimes. So I want to talk about some of the principles that God has given us. Uh, these habits or practices that actually play a key part in helping us to experience what really is a good life. A good life. And, and the first thing I want to lay before you, you see it right there, it's, it's not going to be, it's not a complex mess up. I can get the answers right there is compassion. The text said, as the Father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. If you know the life of Jesus, if you know anything about his life, you know he was a man of deep compassion. In fact, he was frequently moved, the Bible said he moved, his insides churned with compassion. Um, for people, for the hurting, for the lost. And when he saw the crowds, he says that he was moved with compassion because they were harassed, they were helpless, they were like sheep without a shepherd. They were distressed, weary, and dispirited, says another version. And, um, uh, and so we know that, that Jesus expressed this deep compassion for people. 
And uh, we, we should be the same way. We should be a people of compassion. I, I think you are. When I saw your, your screen of all the things you're doing to outreach to folks who are hurting, like Hope Gardens and some of the other things you're doing, those are wonderful works of compassion. And God bless you for that ministry that you do. We should also accept the Lord's compassion and pity on our lives. Amen. We should accept the Lord's compassion and pity that he gives and he offers to us. God is a compassionate God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now here's something. I'm going to throw a little twist on this word right here. On uh, this word of compassion. We also need to couple it with self-compassion. Are you compassionate towards your own self? Hello, somebody. Uh, that will give you resilience and strength in the Lord. You know, it's actually good to be good to yourself. Did you know that? It's good to be good to yourself. Um, it helps us understand the reason it's both fair and important to be on our side when we're good to ourselves. Because, you know, sometimes we have these thoughts that take over. Oh, it's selfish to think about what you might want. You don't deserve love. Deep down, sometimes we say we think we're not deserving of love or we're, we're a bad person. And, and sometimes we'll fail to dream those bigger dreams I think that God wants us to dream. Uh, so we understand this principle, friends, that uh, we should treat people with compassion. We should treat people with decency. But guess what? Those people includes the person who's wearing your name tag. <laughs> you need to treat yourself with compassion too. Amen. Um, uh, the golden rule, y'all know the golden rule, right? That's a two-way street rule, right? It's a two-way street. We should do to ourselves as we do unto others. So being good uh, to yourself is actually good for others. See, when people increase their own well-being, they usually become more patient. They become more cooperative, more caring in their relationships. Think about how it would benefit others if you felt less stressed. What if you felt less worried or irritated and more peaceful or contented and loving? So what am I saying to you today about compassion? Yeah, we should be compassionate to others, but we should also be compassionate to our own selves. Amen. See, by strengthening the relationship you have with yourself, you will see other parts of your life improve. Your relationships will be more authentic. You'll be more motivated. And mistakes will not feel like total failures in your life. By practicing, friends, self-compassion, you're strengthening yourself to handle everything that life throws your way. See, if you can face difficulties without berating yourself, you'll be able to stand tall, remain hopeful and positive. I love, I saw this little sign, and I pasted it in my, <laughs> uh, in my phone. It says, cut yourself some slack. You're doing better than you think. <laughs> so I, I, I think that we need to cut, we, we, we cut everybody else slack, right? We make allowances for everybody else's faults, don't we? Come on, somebody. Uh, their shortcomings, uh, their weaknesses, their weirdness. Oh, come on, somebody. We just say, well, you know how they are. Don't we do that? Come on. <laughs> Why don't we do that for ourselves? Because we all have shortcomings. Am I right about it? We all have weaknesses. Amen. And we should say, Maybe I'm not everything I should be, but I'm not everything I used to be. Amen. I'm making progress in my life. Maybe not as fast as others may like. Um, you know, one of the memory verses, I put some memory verses in my phone. I go through them from time to time, so I try to memorize some of these verses. One of them is that Paul tells us in Colossians. He says, clothe ourselves every day with mercy, with kindness with humility, 
with gentleness and patience. But here it is, friends, that's not just for other folks. That's for us too. <laughs> Amen. That includes us. All right. So self-compassion is one of the keys to resilience in life. So this is what I want you to do. There's a little space in there. Uh, or write, make, make a thought or a note that um, I want you to practice this self-compassion idea. Write yourself a nice note. I know you write them to other people. Have you ever wrote yourself a nice note? Huh? Have you ever did that? It don't have to be long. It can be uh, very short, but it can be long if you wanted to. Just a sentence. And, and, and maybe you say something like, I'm glad I exist. I, you may say, I'm proud of the work that I do. Uh, I'm whole. Uh, whatever it is that speaks compassionately to yourself, write your own self. Here's the other thing you might want to do. And we're going to get to the second point. Express gratitude for the people in your life. Do you do that? Are you grateful for those folks that are in your life? I'm grateful for Pastor Calasita. I'm so grateful for her faithfulness. I'm so grateful for the leadership she brings in so many places in our conference. I, I just thank God. She, Pastor Calasita is always willing. Every time I call on her, she almost says yes. It's not, I, think, I don't think I've heard a no yet. And I'm so grateful for having her friendship and the connection that we have. But um, let someone know how much they mean to you. Amen. Um, you know, sometimes it's difficult to find a good friend. Isn't it sometimes difficult to find a really good friend? But expressing gratitude is a great way to deepen that friendship and let people know that they're valuable to you. Um, so that, that's just one thing I want to encourage you to, to do. Um, compassion for yourself is where you start when things are tough in life. It's not where you stop, it's where you start having compassion. You know, they actually have done research on this um, and, 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 it's, and it's been shown that, um, that self-compassion makes a person more resilient, more able to bounce back in life. It lowers self-criticism. It, it builds up self-worth. It, it helps you be more ambitious and successful. And, 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 but it, 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 it goes against complacency and laziness. And compassion for your own pain <coughs> is, uh, is a sense of just our common humanity. Because what? We all suffer. Amen. We all face disease. We all face death. We all lose others we love. Every one of us is fragile. I heard someone say, there's a crack in everything, but that's how the light gets in. <laughs> every one of us is cracked in some kind of way. <laughs> and every one of us needs Compassion. Amen. Well, the second thing is gratitude. Psalms 104 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. One of the key principles to living the good life and to having emotional health, friends, is to consistently walk in gratefulness and thankfulness. First Thessalonians 5, 16 says, Be joyful, always pray, continually give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Psalms 136 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love or his mercy endures forever. The people of God are thankful people for they realize how much they've been given. You know, one of the characteristics of the last days, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, one of the characteristics is a lack of thanksgiving. It says that wicked people will be ungrateful. 
But faithfulness, friends, is a theme, a prominent theme in Scripture. Uh, now, I just read Thessalonians 5, 16. It says, be joyful, always pray, continue to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. But did you catch what it said? Give thanks in all circumstances. Now, it doesn't say give thanks for all circumstances, because we don't give thanks for all circumstances, but we give thanks in all circumstances. See, thankfulness should be a way of life for us as God's people. It should just naturally flow from our hearts and from our mouths. And, and the scripture is just full of teaching of why we should be a thankful and, and how we should have gratitude in all different kinds of circumstances. The Bible says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his love endures forever. See, we have two reasons, friends, to be thankful. God's constant goodness and his steadfast love. When we recognize the nature that we are unworthy and we understand that apart from God, there is only hopelessness. But friends, we have a connection. We have a relationship with our God. And so our natural response is to be grateful for the life that he gives us. Amen. We should be thankful, friends, because God is worthy of our thanksgiving. It is only right to credit him for every good and every perfect gift. James 1.17 says, when we are thankful, our focus moves off our selfish desires and off the pain of our current circumstances. See, expressing this thankfulness helps us to remember that God is in control. Amen. Don't we need to remind ourselves that God is in control? No matter what's going on in the world, what's going on in life, God still uh, reigns on the throne. Amen. So thankfulness is always appropriate. It's actually healthy for us. It's actually beneficial for us uh, to be thankful. <laughs> um, so here's my question to you, beloved. What negative thoughts or complaints you may want to write this down. Do you need to replace with words of gratitude? Or you might want to write down, who are you thankful for in your life today? Have you told God how you're thankful for him? Have you told those people that you're thankful for them in your life? Let me ask you something, friends. Do you want to be closer to God? How many want to be closer to God? Let me see if I raise your hand. How many want to be closer to God? Okay, a few of you do. Amen. <laughs> you know what? When you're thankful, you make more friends. You create a greater impact in the world. Here's something you might like. When you're thankful, you live longer. There's no that. <laughs> and a more stress-free life. Modern science now confirms the answer the Bible has taught for millenniums, and that is show gratitude. Be grateful. Be a grateful people. Because gratefulness leads to greater faith. Great gratitude leads to greater faith. Thanksgiving reduces anxiety and leads to inner peace. Gratefulness improves your physical and mental health. Thankful people experience a deep spiritual joy. Gratefulness protects us from envy and covetousness. Amen. Great gratitude proclaims God's greatness, so we should be a people of gratitude. Amen. Well, let's move to purpose. Woo. 
this is something I, I really believe in with all my heart. The purpose, finding purpose in life, friends, can revolutionize your life. It is truly part of the good life when you find purpose. Listen to what the Bible says in Colossians 1 16, for everything, absolute, everything above and below, visible and visible, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. Beloved, may I share something with you today? You are not here by an accident. Amen. You are not here. Oh, I hope someone's listening to me. You are not here by accident. God has a divine purpose for your life. Your life has profound meaning. I don't care what your parents told you or someone told you. You are not an accident. Amen. In fact, the Bible declares that you are a designer original. You are a unique masterpiece from God. There's no one like you on this earth. Amen. Your talents, your gifts, the way you think, your personality, it was crafted by God to help you fulfill a distinct role in this world and has even greater significance in the body of Christ, friends. Um, you know, I'm visually inspired, so I gave you some pictures uh, of hands, and you know, I, I, a symbol for uh, uh, compassion there. You saw the heart lifted up, uh, the hand, and then um, gratitude, with the hands clasped together. And this one uh, is uh, two hands like this, and I almost see it like finding your focus, finding your target, like finding that thing God put you on this earth to do. And I love, I love that. And then I gave you two more pieces, because uh, I just put in Google uh, symbol for purpose, and these, these came up. And I love the one where the one is holding a puzzle piece. Did you see that one? There's a puzzle. And you know, that's the unique person that you are, and that there's a place that you exactly fit and God's design and God's mystery and God's puzzle of life. And there's a place that you, you go there. And there's a, there, there's a reason why you're in the world now, friends. And that's why I love that hand holding the world. Because there's a, there's a reason you have a purpose in life. Uh, uh, that's why I put those images in there uh, for my four points to share with you today. Um, those hand images of purpose speak to me in a very profound way. You uniquely fit somewhere in God's great mysterious design. Uh, have you discovered why you were put on this earth? There's a reason you were born. This time, in this place, uh, it's so important, friends, to know not just Chronos time. You know that there's there's Chronos time. That's the time it is right now, and and uh, hopefully I'll be finishing a little bit in my Chronos time. But there's also Kairos time. That's the time. That's God's timing. It's so important we know the times uh, we live in. The closer you get to your purpose, especially if it's your life's work, friends. Guess what? You work no longer when you get into your purpose. Because uh, work no longer feels like work, actually. You don't need an alarm clock to wake you up uh, uh, because of the deep satisfaction, the joy of walking in the purpose brings true life, that good life. And that is the life that is uh, real life, friends. Um, finding your purpose is so important. You know, all great achievers point to one quality that drives them, is passion and purpose. They love what they do, and the work doesn't seem like work because of that. Um, you know, when I told you I was an aerospace engineer, didn't I? And um, 
But you know what? I never had a real passion for it. I was good at math, so I went into it because my counselors and my dad said, yeah, go into that. And I did it, but I just it was just a job for me. It was just a job. Uh, it just didn't feel right. It was like, let me tell you what it was like. It was like washing your feet with your socks on. Have you ever washed your feet with your socks on? Well, it just don't feel right. <laughs> That's how it felt. And, um, and so, you know, I was praying and, and, and asking God um, about my purpose in life and what I was supposed to be doing, what would give me great passion and, and purpose. And, and let me give you a hint. This is just a hint, okay? Uh, to find your purpose. This is not the only way, but this is the chase. Watch your tears, especially your unexpected tears. Uh, those are connected, really, to your purpose in many ways. Um, see, that's what happened for me. As I told you, I was working at Rockwell, Rocketdyne, Aerospace Engineering. I was on the space stations. I was um, I was in a Rite Aid. Uh, right? It's ironic that it was right over there by where I used to go to church. I wasn't going to that church then, but uh, at the Quirma Band, I was in a Rite Aid, and I saw on the checkout stand um, a, in the drugstore um, a Newsweek magazine. Remember Newsweek used to be big, and right on the cover, there was a cover, and it was just a picture, of, it was a big picture, of the whole frame of the magazine. Uh, um, it was just a picture of a fairly young, sad, uh, southern little black boy. And his name was George Martin. They put the, that in the title. And the bold caption read, A World Without Fathers. A World Without Fathers. And the caption underneath said, The Struggle to Save Black Males. And um, I don't even know why. But just, just from reading that magazine, tears started rolling down my face. And um, I picked up the magazine, read, read to find out what this one positive role model that was in George Martin's life had died. His grandfather, the only positive male role model he had, died. And he was lost um, to the streets, to the inner city. And he got caught up in gangs, and drugs, and crimes, capturing him, and he was lost. And, but I wasn't quite sure, friends, but, um, but this was God's, one of the ways God called me to ministry. So simultaneously, I was flying to Kennedy Space Center, and I was sitting next to my boss, my supervisor, and um, on the plane, and I was reading a little Bible Promises book, and um, just having a little devotion, you know, having a little time of prayer, and I'm telling you, the Spirit just fell on me. And I felt my heart just almost like John Wesley, strangely warm. <laughs> and tears started running down my eyes. And I was very self-conscious. I was sitting next to my supervisor. And I don't even know if he's a believer or not, but I just, I was trying to say, I said, Lord, no, not here. Don't, not, don't, don't do this here. And I was just like, tears are running. And I'm feeling overwhelmed by God's presence. And I heard this internally. Not, not in an audible voice, but eternally. Son, feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Tend my sheep. I wasn't even reading that passage in my devotion. So that was then I knew, you know, this is my time to leave aerospace engineering. Then I took that Christian community developer position I told you about. And and to make a one lower, a long story short, I applied and I started that Shalom Zone Urban Development Project. And it became an award-winning project. We were recognized nationally. Uh, the uh, police chief of police came out to speak to us. And um, God just really just blessed us to make the, the long story short. But it's because I feel I found my purpose. That's what I want to tell you. I went from making twice as much money in aerospace engineering to this community developer shop, I was never happier in all my life. Never felt so fulfilled that I felt then uh, doing that work. Um, 
And so, this is just, and I continue to do it through Urban Kids Camp, and Pastor Kelsey knows about that, Debbie. And um, let me just tell you about another George Martin. Now, you tell you about the George Martin on the Newsweek, but there was another young man that was part of our Urban Kids Camp and mentoring program, and he had the same challenge about no positive male role models in his life, you know, a single mother, just challenged in, in a lot of ways. And he came to our camps and to our mentoring program. And uh, his mom just reached out to me just not that long ago. And she uh, sent me this picture of this same young man. His name is Zachariah. And I wouldn't give you the picture, but it's a picture of him in an LAPD uniform. And he was graduating from an LAPD Academy. And when she told me that and invited me to his graduation at the Academy, I was so overwhelmed. You know what happened? Tears started <laughs> running down my face. Because it was just a fulfillment of when I saw that young man in the magazine and that he's lost and because uh, of this, these camps and these mentoring programs, we were able, and his mother credited the camp with being the foundation in his life that allowed him to stay on track and, and have success in his life. So friend, I ask you, do you know what your purpose is? What are you passionate about? What gifts and talents do you have? How are you using them for the kingdom of God? Knowing your purpose gives meaning to life. We were here to have meaning. Without God, friends, life has no purpose. And without purpose, life has no meaning. Without meaning, life has no significance or hope. God wants us to walk in our purposes. You know what having purpose does? It's one wonderful thing it does, I'm telling you. It simplifies your life once you really understand your purpose. See, it defines, it defines what you do and what you don't do. It's how you evaluate your activities that are essential and the ones that are not. You simply ask, does this activity help me fulfill one of God's purposes for my life? So purpose focuses you. It helps you to concentrate your energy and your effort on what's important. All right, friends. We're at the end. And this last thing is generosity. The Bible said God loves a cheerful giver. You be enriched in every way for your great generosity. And that symbol with the two hands and the heart actually represents hope and generosity. But we just want to talk about generosity today. I love to talk about hope. But I want to ask you, friends, are you a tipper? Or are you a tither? <laughs> are you a tipper? You tip God? Or do you give a percentage giving to God? Do you give God the first fruit of your increase? The Bible says, I am the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So do you give God the first fruit or you just give him the leftovers? See, friend, I believe, and I taught at my church, percentage giving. And I believe the Bible teaches that. I believe God actually calls us to give 10% the tithe. And God calls us to give our first and our best to God. And to give it cheerfully. And to give it generously.
I believe that when we give generously to God, He gives back to us. The Bible says He gives back good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. See, I'm never apologetic about asking you or encouraging you to be an extravagant, generous giver because God is an extravagant, generous giver. He gave us his best. He gave us his son, Jesus Christ. So I'm going to always challenge you to be more generous, to be an a, a extravagant giver to God, to missions, to missionaries, to service projects, to those in need. Be a generous people. Because God calls us to put him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things that we added unto you. Is God at the center of our lives? Or is God just a peripheral influence in our lives? Do we just give God our leftovers at the end of the month? Or do we put God first? So friends, I don't know if you've seen this before. Look at these beautiful apples. They represent, these are 10 apples here. They represent what God has given to us. God is good. He has blessed us. And he's given all this wonderful bounty to us as his people. Amen? Amen. And he says, if you take this first one, and if you give it to him, he will bless the rest. He'll consecrate the rest. And so, this is what God has called us to do. Now I know you may not be ready to give 10%. Not everybody's there yet. Or you may have a lot of debt. I don't know what it is. But maybe you cut this in half. <laughs> you can start at 5%. Then every year, take a step up. You know, the Bible says, put God to the test. Challenge him. I'm telling you, when you become a tither, God will bring blessings that you cannot even hold in your hand. It will overflow. So, friend, I close with this analogy. Look at all this thing, the blessings God has given us. It all belongs to God, but he asks us to return the first and the best. But you know what we do sometimes? If you're like me in my past, Try to be better. I say, God, you know, <clears throat> that iPhone 16, I need that. All I got is the 15. And I, if I would be cool, I would be hanging with my friends. I need that iPhone 16. God, you understand. Now, you know I love you, Lord, but I need these boots. It's winter. I know I got two pair of Uggs at home, but I need these new boots. give you the first and the best. But my friend has this new beautiful watch. And I don't always want a watch like that. 
I want to, I want to tie, I want to give, but I, I just, uh, and then, Use all that God has given us. And we give this leftover. Here you go, God. Here you go. Friends, what we do with our money tells us something about the condition of our heart. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. God bless you. Sunday. So now I invite you to take this time uh, and share your gift and offering. Uh, Joyce and the ushers will be passing the plate and you may put your pledge commitment card in it and your offering for today. And I'm sure that's what our DS has shared with us. Give us this opportunity to reflect the condition of our heart in our offering. Kolea tu ki he kau hiva, ulago mai ke tau hiva, porotonga, ai ni mea ofa ke amoni. The Tongan uh, language ministry will be singing a special song while we are uh, sharing and giving our gift. Yeah. Please come. Uh, all, all of you who are able to come up front, you come up here.
receive the benediction. Now with the grace, the peace, and the love of Christ, rest, rule, and abide in each and every heart. Lord, help us to walk in the truths of your word, Lord. Help us to be more compassionate in life, not just towards others, but even towards ourselves. Lord, help us to be a people of thanksgiving, to give you thanks at all times and in all places. And Lord, help us to find our purpose and passion so that we can walk in that good life. And finally, Lord, make us a people like you, a generous, giving, outreaching people, Lord God. And let it be done in our hearts and with joy, because you have been so good to us. Now, Lord, take us from this place but never from your presence. It's in the wonderful and matchless name of Christ our Savior. And we say, Amen. God amen. bless you.